Hey everybody, it's John DePietro. I am sitting in the dugout at Judy Walden Scarafilly. <laughs> Scare, Scarefile. Scarefile Field in Hyannis, Massachusetts, and it's just before game time. The uh, Hyannis Harbor Hawks will be playing tonight, but prior to that, we want to talk with one of the stars of the team. Now, when I say stars of the team, I don't mean in uh, strikeouts or uh, or batting average or home runs, but certainly one of the stars of the team in getting this team into a winning frame of mind, and he's a fellow Greyhound. His name is Johnny Davis, and Johnny, welcome to uh, a show that I don't even have a title for it. Hey, well, it's it's my pleasure to be here, and uh, you know, I've been really excited to be able to spend uh, this summer back home uh, in the Cape Cod Baseball League working with Hyannis, um, and uh, obviously seeing some fellow Greyhounds down here has been exciting, um, and I, I look forward to uh, finishing out the season strong. Uh, we're three games three games back from first place right now. Uh, we just hit 20 wins, uh, which for Hyannis traditionally uh, has been... Uh, when you, you guys know, were only winning seven or eight, nine games a year, right? Uh, that's what I told the guys last night uh, in, the, in, the, in the team huddle. As I said, you know, it wasn't too long ago that 10 wins was pretty, you know, uh, important for the Hyannis Harbor Hawks. So for us to hit 20 in back-to-back -back years, that's, uh, that's pretty special. So I was happy about that. Okay, and I understand that uh, attendance has peaked, uh, perked up a little bit when people are when teams are winning, attendance always goes up, huh? Yeah, yeah, and it's great to have the community involved. They they support us uh, immensely with team dinners, uh, hosting functions for the players, and so it's been really good. And the community outreach um, has been been really good from the organization this year. Okay, so even though we've um, probably crossed paths for the last few years at Assumption. We've never had the opportunity to meet face to face until I saw a story that appeared in the Boston Globe that um, talked about you and the um, associates that you have. Um, people think, well, you know, Assumption baseball player comes to the Cape League, he's, he's going to play. You're not playing, but you are really contributing to the team. You're an assistant coach. Tell us what your responsibilities are. Yeah, so um, to, to basically um, give you the whole story, last summer um, I was about 10, 10 months uh, post Tommy John surgery, so I couldn't play. Um, so what I did was I accepted a role uh, doing the analytics for Hyannis. They had never had anybody traditionally in this role. And so what I did every night was I tracked our pitcher's data, our hitter's data, um, and basically made um, individual reports uh, for our coaching staff as well as the players and kind of started to work on developing players around those uh, reports. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, we, we had a great year. We went from seven wins to 24. Uh, wait, 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 say that again, Johnny. We went from seven wins to 24 that first year. Woo. A whole new coaching staff, uh, you know, a new uh, attitude. Yeah, general manager who did really well with bringing in elite level talent. Um, and so it was really fun to be a part of. We, we finished in the semifinals, which again, for high end, that's, that's pretty unprecedented. You know, for a while, we're kind of looked at, we were looked at as kind of that, that little brother team in the league that when people saw us on their schedule, it's like, okay, like, we can take, yeah, we can take the night off. So, you know, it was, it's, and then, so what happened was I, I worked through last summer, recovered from Tommy John and um, played at Assumption throughout the fall and the spring. Um, but kind of the whole time I was having a lot of um, long conversation with my um, college coach, Mike Rocco, because when, when these jobs were kind of appearing, whether it be in um, professional baseball, uh, working in quantitative analysis for like an MLB team versus, okay, I had the summer ball opportunities. And then I had a really unique opportunity down here, which was to join the coaching staff and then run a complete baseball operations analytics team and I had the opportunity to kind of recruit the kids that I, that I wanted to bring in. So I, I could bring in as many interns as I thought we needed. Um, and so between me and the GM, Nick Johnson, uh, we ended up bringing in 13 kids uh, from all around the country. Uh, we had yeah, more than a baseball team. <laughs> you got <laughs> yeah. a baseball team and, and what, three, four subs? Yeah, 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 three, three or nine, and yeah, yeah, four makes 13. I met a few of them last night, and they don't step on each other's toes. They all have kind of like, like defined roles. Yeah, yeah. So the interests kind of range from we have some who work in um, roster management, some who do advanced scouting, then we have some on the data modeling side, and then some on the like uh, the development side. So we have all all thirteen have a, like kind of a distinct role that they fell fell into, and um, and yeah, I, I basically 
to make sure that they're they're doing the right work and that um, they, we have actionable decisions to help help the coaching staff um, put the best lineup out there and put us in a position to win. So. Okay. So you said the term quantitative analysis. Yes. One generation ago, you didn't say quantitative analysis and baseball in the same <laughs> in the same notebook, let alone the same sentence. Yeah. Um, obviously, what you're doing, and I think Theo Epstein kind of did this with the Red Sox a while ago, where he used stats to determine the probability of what's going to happen. Yeah. And you know, and stats are based upon historical precedent. Yeah. So. Um, and many coaches coming up, and, and I, I'm guessing that many of your coaches didn't know what you do before they met you and saw the results yeah. of what you're bringing to the table yeah. or to the diamond. For, for a lot of it, you know, we, the, the coaches want the, the information, and I think that sometimes the, the issue in, in um, uh, a lot of organizations is you have your numbers guys and then you have your coaches yep. and the the split down the middle is like the coaches think that okay I don't understand the numbers so yep. I, so I so I don't want to falsely you know attribute something to that and make a mistake and the the numbers guys traditionally haven't played baseball or played yep. at a high yep. level so they yep. say you know what like you know these guys aren't going to listen to me so I'm just going to stay in my own lane and do I think what we've built here is a really good synergy between the two where we have guys on the baseball ops staff who played at baseball at really high levels. Yep. Um, and then we have some guys who are really great with numbers. And I make sure and I tell them that, guys, this information needs to be actionable and it needs to be something that we can understand and then we can blend it to make actual um, uh, decisions. So yeah. I guess for for me, my... I was a man, or I was in, in supposed to uh, major in management when I got, when I got to Assumption. I spent the first uh, about first year. I spent the first year in in in, ma in management, um, and then down went the elbow, and I was drawn more towards the mathematics, the computer science side of stuff. But you don't consider yourself a geek. I wouldn't say so. I mean, I think that uh, there's definitely some nerdier aspects of what I do. If I if I took you through like a a day in the life of the computer stuff, but you know, I think that. Um, some of the, like, some of the people in the math department at, at Assumption, and I, I, I talked to uh, Professor Kozak, uh, Professor Alifano, uh, Demetrius Kenarellis, uh, and June Ma, uh, who is my, one of my coding professors. Uh, those four have been pretty instrumental in um, helping me to, like, understand these concepts uh, and be able to apply them. So. Okay. So, John, the fact that you, can I call you John instead yeah, yeah, of Johnny? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. The fact that you played the game. How much of a factor is that in helping you understand the stats behind it? Because many times people that are the stat guys, I mean, they're the guys with the, with the thick glasses, the pocket yeah, protector, yeah. the clothes that don't match, and they wear shorts with black socks. Yeah. Um, you've played the game, just like my friend Mike Yuva, who's a sportscaster, but he's played college football. Yeah. He's played high school football. Um, does that help you? Yeah, I understand think, the numbers uh, better. There, there will never be a number to quantify, like um, you know uh, how well someone can dig deep into themselves and get out of a, a big situation or, or, or throw that big pitch when you have to. There's, there's still stuff that are technically, um, uh, you know, uh, you're unable to measure, unquantifiable. Yep. Yep. And um, you know, I think that that has helped me immensely. And then you know, I treat a lot of this like you would treat a, um, an organization from a management perspective. Like we still have our um, KPIs, uh, uh, key performance indicators for our, our pitchers. We have certain thresholds we want them to hit every night. And when you explain it to them under that lens of like, listen, you know, here's here's where we want you to be. You know, I, I don't need you to necessarily understand, you know, what this is, but I, I need that you to get here. So we use, for our pitchers, we use, um, you know, a head in three strikes. That's, that's our big thing is we want them within the three, uh, first three pitches of every at bat, to have more strikes than they have balls, or induce a ball in play. So that's uh, that, that's that's probably one of our biggest KPIs. So you want to cut down on the pitch count. We, yeah, and we don't want them falling behind because what what the data shows on our side is that when you fall behind in counts, what what comes to follow is uh, necessarily not um, uh, in as in terms of run value uh, negatively affects uh, the pitcher's outing. So we want them to be as head as much as possible, and that starts with uh, you know our first pitch strike percentage, which is another thing we look at. Um, so basically, um, those, uh, I know this isn't part of the interview, but you can see that little black um, box up there. 
that's that that's called a trackman unit yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Okay. and so basically what that does is it takes every pitch level stat and everything that happens during a game I get it um, about 15 minutes after every game um, and then I have software models written out on my computer the file that gets put into my computer I get generated these post game reports that have everything that our pitchers do and it ranks every pitch according to what our model says is the um, best chance of um, uh, favorable results for them um, and then for the hitters uh, we can track how well they make decisions at the plate and they get sent reports so the hit pitchers and hitters get sent reports every night okay during a game yeah game actual game going on you're in the dugout mm -hmm. you're wearing a uniform yeah okay what are you doing what so, are you watching yeah. what are you what are you so so I get I have two sets of binders that I use every night um, one is the um, opposing opposing hitters uh, and one is the opposing pitchers. So for the opposing hitters, what we get is the first sheet is basic stats, uh, and then when you flip it, you get um, their spray. So you get what a, uh, what a field looks like, and you get where they hit the ball against right-handed pitching, and then the next, uh, and as well as... It shows um, you that yeah, this guy's always going yeah, to as, right field. As well as the spray charts, uh, or the heat maps of where in the zone they hit the pitch. So we get we get that data for uh, of them against right-handed pitching, and then flip it and then left-handed pitching. So okay. three. So sheets, you know how to shi shift the shift, and then for calling pitches, making sure guys know what guys certain out pitches are, where in the zone we want to throw, um, and kind of work from there. And then for um, opposing pitchers, uh, we do like advanced scouting reports the night before, so we look at who the guys have hot tonight. So like for for tonight, um, I've already sent out the report. They're they're throwing a lefty from Yale. So what we go in and do, uh, Harwich I'm, I'm talking about tonight, what we go in and do is um, I have a database that has every pitch they made from college this past year. <laughs> um, so basically from, from the track man, so we get the exact pitch shapes. So I can tell you right now that this pitcher is a left-handed pitcher with a low three-quarter arm slot. And the, the pitch shape on the fastball is 13 inches of carry, which means the ball kind of resists gravity a little bit, has like, and then nine inches of run. So, so it's what, not. Okay, what's nine inches of run? So, okay, so we, so when, when you look at a pitch, um, we quantify the pitch shape on the difference between the, the vertical movement of the pitch and the horizontal movement of the pitch. So, so run means the, 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 the ball runs, the ball is going to the arm side. So, like a two seam, a two seam fastball has a lot of run. Two okay. seam fastball runs. You lost me. You probably lost most of my audience. <laughs> okay. Hey, VJ. He's one of our coaches over here. Hi, Coach. Um, coach, get over here. What's going on? Get over what here. What are you guys doing? Get over here, man. He, he's, a, he, he's an assumption greyhound here for a little, uh, okay. a little interview. So, Coach, I don't need any of this come over here, guys. Coach. Look, I got my Oregon shirt on and Harbor Hawk. You from there? Uh, no. You know the story about? Um, Yo, with Bill Knight. The Knight guy. Yeah. Okay, that's a great story. Yeah. But anyway, get over here. You know, you're, you're in this interview right now oh, because this video is on. Oh, no, 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 no. So I'm, I'm trying to mow a lawn. Coach, <laughs> what, what, does, what does Johnny D bring to the game? What does Johnny he? D brings incredible analytics and incredible insight. And the thing that he does the best is it's the mixture of what's modern and new and what's old. So he has an understanding Give him your of mic, the game. Give him your mic. Go ahead. Yeah, just hold it. Okay. okay. He has an understanding of the game. Because he, how because important he is played. it because he played? I, th I think it's unbelievably important. See, he didn't, he didn't, you didn't really go for that. What I said, <laughs> how, how valuable is the fact that you've been on that mound, that you've, that you've been on that diamond? Because I think what you have is you have two things going on. One thing is, okay, it's my competitiveness and how I have to go ahead and pitch to a guy or hit against a guy and I'm looking at things so I have visuals of stuff but then mm. I also know maybe what the analytics say and maybe how I should pitch okay or hit against a guy okay Absolutely. how's his attitude uh, generally poor <laughs> but, um, generally poor but the players recognize his oh, they love expertise him. they love him they love him even yeah. the ones that are older than him uh, the coaches love him. Yeah. The players love him. The players. We love okay. him. We Give love him. Give him the mic back. Why? <laughs> Isn't there some more? Oh, Don't you want to know other yeah, stuff? Yeah, we'll do another one. We'll do a yeah. special one on you. Yeah. yeah. So, well, Johnny, you got, uh, you got the game tonight. Yeah. And um, I think I'm going to stick around for the game. Well, actually, I'm going to go home and have something to eat and then come back for the game. Um, 
but you're happy. I think we're in a really good spot. You know, I, like like I, like I was telling, and I I told BJ and all the guys last night, and I said this earlier. I've known this. Am I supposed to be showing? Sorry. Yeah, there, there you go. Like, um, I when I growing up, I knew Hyannis to be a team that was never recognized uh, as it should have been. Hi, you know, Hyannis is where the middle, the mid Cape. It should be the best team in the Cape, and I think we're headed in the right direction to do that. And for us to hit 20 wins so early, that's a big, big deal. So. Cool. And Assumption has helped you, your your background at Assumption has been unbelievable. I mean, I, I so having the small school background you know my sister went to university of michigan graduated my younger sister's at the university of arizona <laughs> what i have that they don't have at a big school is i have class sizes that are less than 15 and i have office hours where i can go to not go to a professor and say hey professor here's what i'm working on in the baseball realm can you help me out here and with professor kozak and alfano the guys who mentioned earlier i spent hours with them just going over stuff and i know that my sisters have professors that they've never met the, yeah. and if they want to go to an graduate, office hour they're meet, yeah 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 they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're meeting with TAs okay. I'm right online or and I'm, I'm sitting with people who have these incredible mathematics statistic backgrounds and they're helping me build out this stuff and it's you know that's to me that's the value of a, a small liberal art education is having the different areas where you can go in and focus on what you want to what you want out of the education so cool yeah so we want to end it with saying go hounds <laughs> go hounds and hawks and hawks go <laughs> hounds okay. and hawks yeah thanks everybody perfect